What's up gamers? Weapon fusions are really cool and I've put together a list of a bunch of weapon fusions that you need to try for single-handed weapons, double-handed weapons, spears, and boomerangs. And the things that I show you in this video are going to be game-changing for a lot of you. But before we get into that, I was able to make today's fusion video thanks to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by a game I actually play, Honkai Star Rail, the brand new free-to-play multi-platform space fantasy RPG from Hoyoverse, the creators of the hugely popular Genshin Impact. Get ready to be immersed in a stunning sci-fi universe filled with futuristic space stations, interstellar motherships, and a multitude of fantastical species and mysterious powers. Honkai Star Rail features beautifully crafted cutscenes and breathtaking artistic quality, providing a top-notch audio experience that rivals that of an animated TV series. Dive into the easy-to-learn, turn-based gameplay that's perfect for both mobile and PC. With cross-platform play, you can seamlessly switch between devices, making it a great option for gaming on the go. The artistic and charming characters of Honkai Star Rail are sure to impress you with their style and depth. It's also filled with phenomenal music by Hoyo Mix, which will be able to captivate you with its ambient combat and cutscene tracks. As you progress through the game, you'll encounter rich endgame content, including the simulated universe, Forgotten Hall, and Fight Club, where you can test your skills and push your limits. And to make things even better, you can use this code on screen to get 50 Stellar Jades. Go play for free right now and check out the description below. So this one is going to involve a cannon and a spear. So pretty much, you're going to aim like that at anyone. So here's the whole entire camp. Ready? They don't even know it's coming. And you can keep this going over and over again. And you can see the power of the cannon gun on a spear. Okay, so this is pretty much cannon sword right here. It's a little more accurate and it doesn't just shoot straight. So you can kind of aim a little bit better at the enemies. There we go. And this is the cannon long blade and it's literally going to yeet. <laughs> This one's crazy. It, just, it literally just yeets them at a, more of a angle. I don't know. This one's nice. Yeet. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in what the cannon does on all those types of weapons, there you go. This is the fusion of a mushroom to any weapon. And I'm going to show you exactly what this can do over here. So all right, cut the grass and we're going to go in on this guy. Look, look at the whack, how far he got whacked. Ready? One, two, three, four. And you just whack him all the way. That is a boss goblin Getting whacked with a little mushroom on a tiny weapon that does six damage. Boom. So that is the power of the mushroom. So if you want to put this on a weapon, that's what it does. Um, it's pretty much the same effect on every weapon. You can whack him all the way. But yeah, look at that. Boom. <laughs> okay, sweet. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be talking about rubies, sapphires, and topazes, and pretty much the essential best way to do it. So I'm going to fuse these to any of my weapons because they pretty much have the same effect. <laughs> Sapphire to that one. Okay, so going pretty much here, a ruby is going to be very good for just chucking fireballs at enemies and creating updrafts, especially in these kind of fields. So I could just move to change my position and I could actually get ready for my next weapon that we're actually going to be using, which is going to be my sapphire stick. So check this out. Ready? We just fused a whole group of enemies here, and they're going to be frozen for a bit. Now, while those enemies are frozen, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my Topaz Spear. Now, Topaz Spears are going to be pretty broken here. Um, It's going to shoot out electric currents at enemies, pretty much disarming them. And you can see already, <laughs> as we go into this side, look how powerful that Sapphire is. They're all done. And the best part about this is when enemies are frozen and you hit them, they just do massive damage. So I walk up to this guy... He's gone. All right. And look at our frozen guys. So make sure to fuse those, especially in camps. We're going to walk away and I'm going to show you what opals do as well. So I attach an opal to a wand and this is the power of opals in this game. Creating platforms for you so that you can go ahead and just cross things. So use water when you can and pretty much I can, you have to wait for a little recharge on these weapons, but man, it can get you a lot of places and it's very, very, very useful in these areas. So like... <laughs> like when you do a charge up, look at that. I have all these platforms. So keep in mind the power of an opal. Okay, this one's really fun. I'm luckily I don't have my depths fully explored. So this is going to work out perfectly. This is a star fragment. And what I have in my hand is a magic wand. So what I'm pretty much going to do or magic rod, we're going to pretty much link that to this, right? And yes, while it does look like a little nice torch, guess what else is this? Look at this. Yeah. It actually leads me down with little light paths. <laughs> this is insane. So I can follow these little light paths if I can't see like, oh, what's going on here? Then I use that and I can just go ahead and follow these light paths without worrying about anything else while I make my way over to a light route. So this is pretty cool. So you can just, just do that. How nice is that? Look how bright. You don't even need bright blooms anymore when it comes to these things. All right. So this is going to be the Royal Guard Spear plus a beam emitter. Check this out. Look, look how far I am, by the way. And look at this boss's health. He didn't even touch me. It's just like, it's just like the sniping damage. Boop, boop. 
All right. And then when I made physical contact with it, it broke. But how broken was that? Beam emitter plus a spear. Definitely something you should try. Okay, this is what a beam emitter looks like on a boomerang. You gotta try this. It's so random. And you can use it to throw. <laughs> all right, that's the beam emitter. So for this one, we're going to be using all the dragon horns, the ones that you have to shoot on top of their heads in order to get them. Now, these are going to make your weapons look amazing, and I'm going to show you them on different weapons. So yeah, that's that's what they look like. So I'm going to be fusing the fire horn with a single weapon, single bladed, so you can see what that looks like. And with the boomerang, I'm going to be fusing the electric dragon horn. And just to show you, you can throw the boomerang and shock things with it. So let's go ahead and just show you exactly how it works in combat. All right, here is it in action. The electric boomerang. That was a miss. Let's go, let's go for it. There we go. And it comes back to me and you completely shock the enemy. And you can just hit them with elemental damage from a distance. It's just so nice. All right, here's the fire one in action. It just looks so cool on the swords. Just You can build cool aesthetics on your character. So yeah. So you just beat the heck out of this Volcobin. And you can see that it does charge down and that the flame goes away after time. Um, So keep that in mind. These weapons are not permanent always on the elemental glow. So if you throw it, that's what happens. So yeah, you, don't, you can't throw out any amazing fire attacks with that so there you go this book goblin's down and that's what these two do so i put the ice horn on a boomerang here and i wanted to show the ice horn in action take a look at this all right so this is the nadro one and i'm just gonna go ahead and throw this this is probably the best one because of the range you can throw it and get your weapon back so look at this right here i throw that and we completely froze their boss <laughs> boss is completely down here and uh these little guys here are just gonna freeze you over there and that's gonna come back to me i missed that one on a cool throw i'm, I'm gonna attempt that one again and that one tapped the other one to knock it out while coming back and let's go to this boss here and my hearts are down so i'm gonna switch over to the light dragon spear now light dragon spears don't seem to really cool down like the other stuff and i'm just gonna just hit them to get my health back and that's the really cool part about this so just go ahead and dodge if you do a flurry rush with this it's probably gonna be even faster to recover your health so yeah here's some big ones and now that i backed away from the enemy we're gonna kind of show the utility of mixing up and matching elementals so here we go there's the ice boomerang and we We've just hit both of these guys, gotten it back. How cool is that? That is the coolest thing to do. And then yep, let's recover some health too while we're at it and do extra damage because we hit an enemy that was frozen. So that's the horns. Okay, we're going to be using dragon charge for this one. So the fire one, the electric one, the ice one, and the light one. So I'm going to be throwing them down over here and fusing them to different weapons and different types of them so you can see exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to fuse one to the spear, fuse one to a single-handed weapon. We're going to fuse one to a double-handed weapon, and we're going to be fusing one to a boomerang okay so i'm gonna go ahead and start off with the boomerang and check this out Woo! looks like shards also work when using a boomerang that is pretty cool so dragon parts are definitely something you want to throw on boomerangs because the elemental throw on that is amazing all right so next what i'm going to go ahead and grab is the sledge which is going to be our ice one on the spear and that's what it's going to look like it looks amazing so you can just Go ahead and just hit the enemies one two freeze them up let me just dodge that real quick and you're gonna have to wait for it to charge as you can see it's not really coming back on right away that's the problem with the dragon ones versus gliok glioks are constantly functional while dragon ones are great and you get a lot more of these but the more of something you can farm really fast the less efficient it is so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and show you that now we can use the electric single-handed weapon and i do have a dual wieldy over here i have a ruby shield so i'm kind of using two elements at the same time so he's gonna be hitting my shield boom and the fire hits him and then we hit him with the electric he gets all buzzed up over here and then i'm gonna go ahead and grab this my light dragon hammer two-handed weapon we're just gonna hit him and watch our hearts right here there we go and smack and he's gone <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and hit him again one two smack them away and then finish up my hearts and get them back there we go and that's the power of dragon shards and they look really cool on weapons just the glow looks amazing and they are pretty sturdy as well and just a quick test let's see if it works on farming in the underground to show if they're good for hitting rocks and the answer is yes uh, i'm taking down some zonate over here grabbing that and i can also use this right here Yep, it works. All right, shards confirmed to be a hard material. Obviously, I mean, they're on the back of the dragon, but just wanted to show that it's possible. So while recording and going over the weapons, I just wanted to show you a cheaper trick I found. So using the elemental keys eyeballs, it is a lot more functional than getting the expensive dragon parts in order to do it. So there you go. Look at this. So this is a keys eyeball, right? And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you just the power. So I'm going to alert this entire camp. And the keys eyeball, believe it or not, 
shot is just as good as a regular one. So here these guys are coming after me. I'm just going to zoom a little faster. And we're going to... Yeah, it literally does what we need to do. All right, now check this out. If we go ahead and rewind, check this out. <laughs> you can rewind the boomerang and grab it midair. So there's a lot of cool tricks you can do. I just wanted to show you guys that. Just so you know, that is a possibility when enemies are coming close to you. Really cool stuff here. All right, so now you guys know you can do that. Just wanted to say that. Now, you may have come across something called an ancient blade in your game. This thing is absolutely amazing. You're supposed to use it on an arrow to kind of symbolize the ancient arrows, but you know what? You can also use it on a weapon, and I think this looks really cool on a boomerang. I've been using boomerangs a lot. So right in front of us is a Lionel, right? And usually we have to farm them for their parts. And the cool part about this boomerang is you can aim it at him. <laughs> And he's gone. That looks really cool, actually, but it's kind of underwhelming. The only problem with using these exact items to fuse is that you don't get any drops. No drops. You just eliminate the enemy. So if something's in your way that you need to get to somewhere, go ahead and use that. It's pretty OP. So this is an electric Lysol spear. Basically, it's an electric monster part attached to a regular long stick. And you can see that when I have this out... This is what it does, and then it runs out of power. But if you attach something like a Gleok Thunderhorn to a weapon, check it out. It literally never stops. Like, you could literally just keep going on with the charge. Everyone. It just, it doesn't end. You can unlimit. It just keeps, it just, get, yep, there you go. It just keeps working. That is the beauty of having a more powerful elemental weapon. So to do something like this, you're going to definitely want to farm some Gleox to get this. This is what the Flame Gleok looks like with a Royal Guards Claimer, so a two-handed weapon. And it is the coolest thing when you charge it up. Look at this. You're just a spinning flamethrower. <laughs> and the flame doesn't run out at all. Unless, you know, unless you, you, know you, you just don't want to get hit by, like, a Mokoblin. He's a little protected over there. But just keep look. Look how long this keeps going. There you go. Okay, this is what the Thunder Gleok weapon looks on a two-handed weapon. Here we go. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> How cool is that? It's literally amazing. So, yeah. Thunder Gleok weapons. Basically, any Gleok weapons are just insane. And you can just imagine the Ice one's going to function the exact same way. But I'll let you guys try that one out for yourself. So this is the flame emitter on a single-handed weapon. Just to show you what it looks like over here. Pretty cool stuff. And when you charge up, you get a nice little area of effect here. Use that to your advantage. And on the side note, here is what the frost emitter does. So it's almost the same if you really look at it. Like, it's just whipping out all these frost areas. And then if you take a spin, it does a whole AoE spin effect with that. So that makes it pretty cool for attacking and hitting things. And it just uses your battery when you are attacking enemies all right so that's what the emitters look like on this when you use two-handed weapons with this you're just pretty much going to get a further range so pretty much just like the single-handed weapons just further and when you're using a spear it's pretty much going to give you the straight line of hitting them versus something like you won't get really a spin there so i guess that's the benefits of using a spear so if you want a direct straight approach use the spears in order to do that and if you're curious what boomerangs look like with these devices that is pretty much how it's going to work. And it's a much more higher AoE than most of the other stuff because it just it just blows out everything. So. so I'm on top of the giant Great Deku tree here in the Korok Forest. And on top of it is a little Korok named Walton. Now, Walton leads you to weapons known as Forest Dweller Weapons. So here is the sword over here. I'm going to grab. And if you can read the Forest Dweller Sword's description, it says, A living wooden Korok blade with a decayed blade. Bursting materials attached to the tip can be reused again and again. And this is what it looks like. This is really important for you to remember. And over here is hidden a Forest Dweller Spear, which does the same thing. This is going to be important for the next few fusions that I'm going to be showing you. Okay, we're fusing our Puff Shroom with our Forest Dweller Sword. And we're fusing our Muddle Bud with our Forest Dweller Spear. So check this out, okay? Watch this. <laughs> and the Muddle Bud's still on here. So now we've just confused all the enemies with the Muddle Bud. And the big guy is going to take out all the little ones here. Now, here's the crazy part. Ooh. So while we got the... Yep, there he goes. He takes him out with the Muddle Bud. And he's going to go for his other homies just like that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. So Muddle Butt on the Forest Dwellers, amazing. Now you're gonna watch what happens when he runs out. He's gonna eventually look for me and try to find me. Okay, so now he's like, oh, what's this? And then what we're gonna do here is, if I just... He has no idea where I am. 
And I can use that again. He still can't see me. And we pumped it up again. And then you can switch over to like a better weapon. For example, you got your master sword and you start hitting him up. He has no idea what just happened to him. Switch again over to your forest dweller item. Just like this. He's like, oh, there you are, buddy. And he loses us again. And we come out of here and... Loses us again. And you can go ahead and just use whatever weapon you have to just beat this guy senseless because he can't see you. And every time that question mark on his head goes away and he realizes you're there, you're pretty much just going to do it over and over. And that's the benefit of these forest dweller ones. You can literally, you can confuse all the enemies, hit them with the muddle buds, anything you need. It's crazy. And you can do it over and over again and combo those. So go ahead and take advantage of those for sure with the forest dweller weapons. Also want to add it, you can flashbang. <laughs> it's like you can blind them too. Uh, that's going to be with a dazzle fruit. So that recharges on the forest dweller weapon. You'll see when it's ready to go. And flashbang. And you can't see you again. And you can still do some hits. And he doesn't see you. Wait for it to happen. And here we go. Flashbang. And he's flashbanged again. All right. Those are three big ones that you can use when it comes with the forest dweller weapons. Did you know you can fuse a honeybee hive to your sword or weapons? Let's see what happens. And now that we've done that, check this out. Here is our victim. This book goblin knows nothing that's about to happen. He's like, oh, okay, I'm going to aim at you, buddy. Then I'm going to just... And I'm out, dude. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> and the bees are doing my job for me. I mean, it's not like crazy powerful. But I wonder if you can you can bring in more bees. Okay, it's just like every enemy is coming out right now. <laughs> what? What is going on? Okay, so beehives are possible. I don't know what fun you can do with this, but it's, it's cool. It does some attack. Okay, this one goes out to all my Minecraft players out there. This is... <laughs> The Diamond Reaper. Oh, man. I was trying to get a diamond sword. Okay, actually, I got this. I got this. This goes out to all my Minecraft players out there. If you fuse a diamond to a sword, you pretty much get a diamond sword. And it makes the weapon durability pretty good. And uh, here's what, uh, what we can do with it. So... Oh, that tree's done. So it's probably... It's just more durable, pretty much, because you're fusing it with a diamond. <laughs> and uh yeah that's the diamond one okay so this is a big one i wanted to show off because this is one of the coolest ones for aesthetic reasons um this is going to be using the silver lizalfo's horn and we're going to be fusing it onto a spear and you can use this on any spear <laughs> it literally looks like the most amazing grim reather scythe you have ever seen in the game i mean it's like a death scythe and with this armor the evil spirit armor it just looks fantastic so unfortunately it doesn't swing like a scythe and it just still moves like a regular lance but but look how amazing this looks, though. And it looks amazing with this armor. So go ahead and grab this one for aesthetic purposes. I'm sure you guys will enjoy this one. This is, again, only on Silver Lizalfo. So this is the final tier. For some reason, they always make the final tier of a monster look good. But that totally makes sense because that is the final tier. All right, this is what a Lizalfo's tail looks like when you attach it onto anything. So when you extend... it. <laughs> Look at that. It is so fun. And then the higher attack or the higher tier Lizalfos, obviously the better the attack and the higher base weapon you're going to use, the higher the attack. But we're just trying to show you fusions of this video. So look how cool this is. It just extends so far for no reason. And then the flurry rush. Here we go. It's so weird. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> Let's move on. Now, there are a lot of other cool fusions in the game that you guys are probably going to come up with and mention that I forgot. So go ahead and check out this fusion video of shields. That way you can see some OP ones like this ruby flame shield that I have right over here. Seriously, click it. That Lionel just died. 